G'day guys, welcome back to Casual Fan Experience. A little bit of a hiatus, but he's back. Brendan, how are you, mate? Oh, I'm good. I'm feeling very good now, so yeah, looking yep. forward to it. Good to have you back on, mate. Um, today we've yeah. got um, another young West Australian boxer, Jude Grant, on, um, who's fighting Thunder Dome 43 um, on September 1st of this Friday. Um, but looking forward to having him on, and we'll, we'll, we'll see him soon. First things first, welcome, Jude. Um, thanks for jumping on the, the podium and making some time for us, mate. Really appreciate it. Easy, thanks for having me, man. No, more than welcome, more than welcome, Easy. man. Just wanted to start, I guess, uh, first question we ask anyone that's sort of getting in anything uh, professional, athletics wise, whether it be boxing or whatever. What was it that, I guess, drew you to boxing, or um, I guess, what was those things that got you to taking those steps to where you are now? Um. So I played like quite a few sports throughout my time. I played some basketball, footy, cricket, soccer, like just about every sport. Um, I love like competition. I feel like boxing is just like the purest form of competition. So yeah, I think that's what I think drew me to it. Yeah. For sure. You, you didn't start, I've seen, obviously read a few articles and, and seen a few things. Um, hmm. Didn't really start like your boxing training, such from what I can get until about 18, about what, four-ish years ago? Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Reasonably late. Start, I guess when it comes to like how quick a turnaround to like the pro ranks and whatnot. Um, mm. How have you felt, I guess, your own development and like level of has been coming in sort of kind of late relatively um, mm. and getting to, to a standard that's competitive? Um, I feel like like adapting to the pro game was pretty easy. Like once I picked up the basics of, bo- of boxing, um, I did feel like like I just dive straight into it as soon as I you know go into it. I was consistent with my training. I feel like that was the biggest like contrib- contributor to my um I guess fast rise um and yeah I think just like staying stay consistent with it yeah sure and and obviously you had Muay Thai as a background. What sort of sort of footing or base did that give you for the boxing to transfer into boxing? Um, obviously it's like, it takes a lot of mental toughness. Um, you know, like it's not fun getting kicked and, and like kneed and elbowed, <laughs> but, um, I feel like it did definitely help me. Like, um, it helped build mental strength. Obviously, like it doesn't translate directly into boxing, but, um, mm. it, yeah, like it definitely did, did help me in my progression. Yeah. I feel like, and again, correct me if I'm wrong, but. Like having that experience of still being like one on one with someone in a in a ring, like is something that you can't yeah, get from anything yeah. other, than, other than combat sports, right? And so having yeah, having that already yeah. In, in your locker. And like when you're versing someone who has like eight weapons, so like knees, kicks, elbows, and punches, like ver- like versing someone who's got two, makes it a little bit you know there's less yeah. variables. <laughs> less to watch out for, I suppose. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Was there yeah. was there a moment early on in in like the training or, or whether it be even in your first couple of fights or something where there was just like at least a moment where you're like, oh shit, like this is for real? Like that maybe like not that you've got, you know, bitten up more than you can chew, but like just kind of a wake up call to like, no, nah, like this is the real deal. Um, I think my first amateur fight, um, like, you know, like everyone goes like has an image yeah. of how it will go and stuff and like, you know, you dream and it's like getting a knockout and like landing a big punch or whatnot. But I think I, I landed like like a perfect punch. I saw his like chin like go the other way. I was like, okay, like is he gonna drop? And then like he just like came straight back. I was like, oh okay. So <laughs> it's not as easy as I thought. Um but yeah, I think sure. yeah boxing bo- boxing is like filled with those moments where you get checked um if you're too yeah. confident. Um but yeah it's just like a 
about, I guess, how many of those you can take and like how much you can push through. That determines yeah. how far you'll go. Is there is there a shot that you remember like dishing out? That's just one of those ones that you're like, yeah, fuck, got him. You know what I mean? Is there one that yeah, comes to well, mind? Yeah, there's like a few where like you land them and you just feel like it hasn't even landed and it just like yeah. goes through them, which is obviously feels very satisfying. Um, it's like what you work for, <laughs> but um, yeah. yeah, like yeah, like I definitely have felt yeah, like some some good shots. Yeah, <laughs> sure. Um, sorry, Brandon, did you, did you have one? No, you're all right. You're good. No, I was just going to say, I saw, I did see that you've done a bit of like coaching for boxing as well. Um, mm. that's, I mean, got to be something that's helped like with your own technique is having to like show someone how to do it. Has that, how have you found that that's like developed your, your own, your own, I guess, style and, and ability? Yeah, for sure. Like it, it's, it's definitely helped. Like I guess seeing it from, a third person perspective, um, being able to critique others sort of makes it easy to critique yourself. Um, yeah, just I guess also just like the immersion in in the sport itself is like definitely definitely helped when you are coaching. Yeah, and that's something I think I've seen like in a few things from you is just like you really do seem to have like just fully immersed yourself in mm. like what boxing Absolutely. is and the culture around it and. And everything which you know is only going to help you. I, I, I assume anyway, from my vast knowledge. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, you you only had a a short sort of amateur career, mm. um, something like nine nine fights or something. Um, what was the the force, the driving force to turn pro so quick? Um, I think my goals were always like always light in the pro game. Like I. Yeah, I had those nine amateur fights. Like, they were broken up with COVID um, and, like, a few other things. So, like, I, like, got them in relatively quick succession. I felt very comfortable in there. Um, but, yeah, I just think I felt like I wasn't really satisfied. Like, I, like, I went to a few pro shows and I was like, this is where I want to be. Like, I don't want to be wearing, you know, like, a, a singlet and a head guard. I want to be, you know, like, in, in the real game. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's cool. Speaking of... um. We've had a couple of people on on before. Um, obviously, Jordan and, and Alex have both been on, but um, mm. they've both mentioned as well, like the COVID times being being like a tricky time as a professional fighter. Um, how did you find throughout that period of time, where basically there was no fights really being booked or uh, anything really happening for for, you, <laughs> for the pros? Um, I, I hated it. Um, yeah. yeah, like. I remember, like, so I had a, a blood clot. I got a blood clot in one of my arteries, like, right before that. So I had, like, about three or four months off. And then I was finally cleared to spar. And then, obviously, COVID happened, and I was, like, straight back into not sparring. Um, which, obviously, was very frustrating. But I think Absolutely. the fact that it was still in the early part of my career, it means I didn't lose too much time, like, relative like, to someone who would be at the tail end or, like, at the peak of their career. Um so I do have to be grateful with that. But um yeah, obviously it was like a tricky time to navigate. And like I was just so bored. <laughs> like as we all were. I feel like yeah, a lot of people, yeah, can relate to that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um and you've got Thunderdome coming up in about three days. How how's yeah. the training camp and everything going for that? Good, just losing the last of the weight at the moment. Um yeah, so like if I'm a little bit drained or yeah, like some of my hands don't make sense, that's probably why. Um, but yeah, like the, this camp has been so good. Like I've had like a real good team around me. Obviously, you've spoken to Jordan, a few others. Yeah. Um. But yeah, like I think this time I've just been more acclimated because I went from one gym to another, and now being with big rigs for not one camp, but this is my big my second camp. I think we just like know each other better, and like we're able to work with each other more seamlessly. Yeah, absolutely. How do you feel? Yeah, as you said, like the the transition to big rigs, like they've obviously got a pretty good stable there, um, some pretty pretty handy fighters and and, and whatnot. Mm. Um, obviously, how do you feel as a group there? Like the transition to to big rigs has has been for you. Oh, I love it. Obviously, like big rigs, a character. He's like knows so much about the game. Um, and like having him behind behind you obviously gives you a lot of confidence. But not only him, like having having Tony as my manager, 
having like sparring partners like Jordan and Milad, who's fighting in the night as well. Like they're both undefeated. Like you don't really get that sort of sparring elsewhere. Um, and like, we've been to a few other gyms as well. Like it's just by the top guys, which is super good. Yeah, that's sick. With um, I did say in a previous uh, I think interview with someone I think last year that you mentioned that sometimes you've had some pretty brutal weight cuts. So how is the weight cut going? And because I think what really way good. The, yeah, yeah. way into Thursday or something. So mm. that's going all right. Yeah, so it's it's going really good. I've got a nutritionist. I feel like I've like that's organized nice. things much more now. Yeah, um, I've obviously there's like a ton of maturing. Um, <laughs> I've also gone down a weight class since then as well. So like, yeah, okay. The fact that like I used to have such weight classes at a higher weight, like I'm already below that weight now, which is crazy. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think like it's just a part of maturing and like yeah, of course. Yeah, because like, I I used to want to do everything like eat and also train and also want to fight, but it's not not doable. <laughs> do you have like a like one weight cut in particular that really like just kind of when you went no nah, I need to need to start doing this right or was yeah. it just a yeah. Yeah, absolutely. My last Muay Thai weight cut, I um, think I cut like five on the day, five kilos. Um, oh, shit. Yeah, and like I was just like going like in and out of consciousness and like I vomited, <laughs> like I was like vomiting. I don't even know what, how much I, like how I vomited because I had nothing in my belly, but yeah, it was definitely very tough and it um, drained me a lot. I felt very heavy the next day. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Wow. That's, um, that's a month's worth of work for me. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's mad. Um, well, it should it should be months work. Yeah. Yeah, worth of work. It, it should be yeah. in a done in a day. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't seem like the healthiest way to way to go about it. Yeah. But... <laughs> um, speaking on obviously, yeah, your Thunderdome forty three, but you've obviously been on a couple others. Um, how is the Thunderdome experience? Because we're not from over there, so we haven't actually been able to ever get to one. Mm. Um. How is the experience at that Thunderdome and and because like we've watched a couple, we've watched one on, online and stuff. And it seems pretty sick, but what's it like being there? <laughs> um, I feel like being there is like it's a whole different experience. You get to see like the lights, the glitz, and the glamour of it. Um, there's like yeah, like it's pretty cool when you're on the stage because there's like a whole like basically wall of people because there's like different stories and stuff. Um, obviously with the VIP and like the gold VIP and like what what else? Um. It's it's very very cool. It's like a lot brighter, especially like the lights compared yeah. to amateurs. It's yeah. just like a, yeah, like a whole different experience. Yeah, sick. I feel like it's a really cool like platform for guys like yourself that are fairly early in, in your mm. professional career to like Absolutely. experience those bright lights a bit more. Yeah, hundred um, percent. So yeah, fight is Friday. Um, we do love a good prediction on the on the show. So if you do, do you have a prediction for how it's going to go? Or, yeah, well, I, I, I've obviously like I, I want the KO. I think I'll yeah. get it earlyish. I think either first or second round. My oh, coach yeah. said second round, but I think I want to do one better and do the first, hopefully. Yeah. But I'm not going to look for it or chase <laughs> like chase it too much. But obviously, if it's there, you know, no, no, we do love a good prediction, so we'll, we'll keep we'll keep an eye out for it. <laughs> yeah. Um. What's what's the next step after that? Knock him out first round. Where do you go to? Um, I think whatever Tony, like whoever Tony puts in front of me, I've got the confidence I can beat them. Um, and he's a, like yeah, he's a very smart smart manager, and he like knows the, the correct steps to to build up a, a fighter. So I've got full trust in him and Big Rick to decide who I'm fighting next. But I feel like I do want to come over east. Um, like and fight whoever, but it's just about I guess getting my name out there more, and um, yeah, so it's, yes, just building up my record. Absolutely, got to feel um, you feel pretty good having someone like Tony for the have you having your back with it all. Has it um has it been with signing on with him and um, obviously having his I guess connections and, and knowledge of, of the sport and particularly in Australia. It's a blessing. Eh? Like I went from having like. Like it was like a, like I had like having like near no fights and having to beg for fights to like having a surplus of fights like yeah, it yeah. just completely um changed my career it, yeah just having someone like him in your corner definitely like 
takes away a lot of the stress of like, who am I going to fight next? And what, like, what, what I'm going to do and this and that. Cause he has so, so much experience and like, yeah, as you said, so many connections. Absolutely. A couple of the things we like to like to ask them here. Um, one, who, who's in your opinion, the, um, the best boxer worldwide currently? Um, I think Terrence Crawford. He's he's been my favorite boxer for a while. Um, but I also like Neo in a way as well. So like either one of the yeah. like those two, I'm like happy with. Yeah, they've had some pretty yeah. incredible performances fairly recently. So yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. It's hard to argue with either one of them. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, one of the other ones, influence influence of boxing. Mm. What are your thoughts, and do you, do you follow it? Um, I don't like obviously it comes up my um Instagram and stuff and TikTok, yeah. but um I don't follow it. Um, but if anyone want to fight me, you know, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I'd be very open to it. Yeah, payday for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's obviously something yeah. that's like a little bit controversial with like I guess I guess you call them boxing purists in that you know they're not mm. from your typical boxing background and they don't take the typical route for like the ring. Um, as a as a pro boxer, like what do you like? What do you think of like? I guess what they're bringing to the sport. Well, they're bringing eyes. That's for sure. They're bringing like new like new people. Um, like I, I feel like at the end of the day, it's bringing more publicity to boxing in general. I don't think it's a bad thing at all. Like, and at the end of the day, it's like it's not. It doesn't like it's not about how good of a boxer you are. It's about how many people you can draw, and it's like it makes sense. Boxing's a business. And obviously they're doing well in the business, so like, um, I'm fine with it. And like, the more like, yeah. the more that they're pushing it, the more like investors there will be in it. So like, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm 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 cool with it. Yeah, I think there's like a few things that even some boxers can take from them in terms of like promotion and just like yeah, you know, absolutely, you know, yeah, like marketing themselves because they do it so like these guys are mm. you know it's their job to market themselves. Um, yeah, yeah, like, hundred percent. Sometimes it can be a bit gimmicky, but like I think just there's some basic things there that are like pretty. I think it can be pretty pretty handy for some people. Yeah, for sure. For sure. If um for yourself, if there was if there was one attribute you could take from, from any boxer and just like implement it in yourself and, and like what, what would it be? So like one one box attribute, all time, whoever. Mm. I don't know. I don't, I don't know if I would take it like another person's like attributes i feel like yeah, okay. i like what i have I, yeah like yeah, I, yeah. I don't know um even just like one thing like whether it be like i don't know i feel like like terrence crawford's ability to, to switch stances so i can yeah okay. fight out of both stances yeah yeah that's fair absolutely yeah. yeah nice i like that one that's a good one um one piece of advice that you've received over your peer, over your fighting career so far that you'd give to any other boxer getting into looking at going pro? Um, I feel like I, I, I'll give I'll give two. Um, so one of them is obviously setting out the business side of your boxing. Um, so like that's like, like sponsors, your man, like manager and stuff like that. That's obviously very important because you want to be able to monetize it at the end of the day. And the second one, if it was easy, anyone would do it. You know, like to understand that there's obviously going to be tough times, but the tough times are what makes the make the good times worth it at the end of the day. And it's basically like who can take more tough times, like who doesn't quit. That's who's going to succeed in the end. For sure, absolutely. That's the go. Absolutely. If if you had the chance, like if you could put yourself in the ring against like anybody, like currently. And like obviously, you pay your dues and you're and you're ready to do it. Who's the who would be the call out if you if you had that? I don't know. I think I like I honestly want everyone, like everyone in yeah. my division. Um, <laughs> Give me everybody. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I honestly wouldn't even wouldn't even know. Like yeah. who? Like obviously, like, I, like honestly, whoever they put in front of me, I'm happy. Like yeah. happy to verse. I no, think, no. Like I'm not too focused on one person and like yeah. building my skills right, like around beating one person. I want to beat everyone. Yeah, nice. Yeah, awesome. Oh, beautiful, mate. I think that's all I've kind of got for now. Um, Cheers. Yeah. It's been, it's been, again, thanks for coming on and thanks for um, being so patient for all the... All good. Brand. That's all right, Matt. Um, yeah. Really hey, appreciate you coming on. Friday.
yeah, good luck for Friday night. We'll definitely yeah, we'll be, be watching. We'll tune in. Cheers, boys. Thank we'll you, watch boys. For that. Have a good one for that first round knockout. Yeah, mate. Have a good <laughs> one, boys. Have a good one. See you, mate. See ya. See ya. See ya. See ya. See ya. See ya.